Hey, what's up, everybody? Plant Big Seas here with James Ashby. Yo, what's happening, everybody? Yeah, we're at the, um, the UK Vegan 2017 camp out. You having a good time? Having such a good time, man. Yeah, it's been amazing. I met hundreds of epic people here. James Aspie, uh, you are a prolific, uh, influential animal rights activist. Thanks, uh, bro. You're most well known for the, the vow of silence, the year-long vow of silence you did. James Aspie took a vow of silence for 365 days to promote compassion to animals. How is it sort of uh, responding to people that, that come up to you and say, oh man, you changed my life, you changed my life, you're amazing. Like, is it quite overwhelming? It's not overwhelming. Um, it's it's amazing. I can't I can't even begin to describe it. Actually, it's sort of surreal because you know, like yesterday, there was like a three-hour line t for people just one after another telling me that I've inspired them to go vegan or inspired vegans to become activists. And it is amazing, man. And it just goes to show that you know one person can make a difference, and all those people who have been inspired will continue to make a difference. And that's how the good news spreads, man. So. I just feel very grateful to have been able to contribute and uh, do my thing, you know, and have a positive impact. A lot of people, when they talk about vegan activism, ask what's the best method and the political, the best answer really is there's no one method and that's the safest answer. But honestly, what are like your tips for, for effective vegan advocacy? What are the do's and don'ts? Just don't be scared to, to no, say no, the no. controversial just make stuff. sure make sure you're constantly covering yourself in blood. You're screaming as loud as you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, so, no, <laughs> so what do you do, right? Um, personally, my opinion, through trying different approaches and through you know studying a lot of what's worked and what hasn't, um, I think right now, if we're trying to crack into the mainstream, the best thing that we can do is speak to people with patience, with understanding, with respect, with compassion. When I say understanding, I mean understanding where this person is at, being socially aware of how to communicate with this person without them getting their defenses up. So talking about our own journey, the connections that we made instead of trying to make them make that connection on the spot. When you talk about your own journey, they will naturally do a similar thing with their own mind, thinking about, well, how do I think about what he's just said? How do I think about this and that? I think that if we just educate ourselves as activists, learn the answers to all the most common excuses, myths, lies, questions that people have, which is their sticking points to becoming vegan, and we can help cross them off their list, we can help them get to a point where they don't have any excuses left and being vegan is the only thing that really makes sense to do. To do that education, we can do it in so many ways. If people think that vegan food is disgusting, we can cook amazing, delicious vegan food and send them a bunch of recipes. If they don't think that it's healthy, we can show them all the healthy vegan athletes. We can show them all the studies that prove how healthy being vegan is. If people don't think animals have sentience, we can show them examples with videos of them doing amazing things. You know, there's, there's countless different ways that we can cross these things off the list. And I guess what I've noticed is that when we speak to people with understanding, with respect, and knowing that these people aren't the enemy, it's the system that's the enemy. It is this type of conditioning that we've been led to believe some animals matter, some animals don't, some animal cruelty is unacceptable, some animal cruelty is acceptable. You know, it's not their fault. And so I think when we talk to people in this way, we can have just amazing benefits where we speak from the heart and then we reach their heart and in my opinion and my experience doing that not only is it best for the people that we're speaking to because instead of them getting their defenses up which is a barrier it goes straight to them and it's not only better for the animals because of that reason as well because we're, we're being more effective but it's also better for us we don't have to generate anger we don't have to generate hostility we don't have to generate aggression or any of this kind of negative emotions inside of us and this will help us sustain our activism for longer it'll help us be more positive people and i think that's another thing that makes veganism more attractive if we all look like angry aggressive annoying vegans which kind of is the stereotype people are going to be less inclined to become vegan just for that reason they don't want to become one of those people but if we are showing how positive this is how great we feel how amazing being vegan is and it is then you know that's a that's another way to attract people to this amazing yeah, way of man. living. You're really um, not just relatable, but really articulate in, in the way you communicate that message. Just wondering, sort of like, how long have you spent rehearsing, you know, those answers <laughs> and, and that 
because yeah. he seemed to he seemed to have an answer for most of the for most of the critics. I think that you know when I first started getting interested in animal rights, I watched other activists answering questions like I do now, and I thought, man, I could never do that. I wish I could, but when people ask me where I get protein, I don't even know what to tell them, man. I I started at the exact same place, and. It's, it's just practice, you know? If you're not comfortable speaking to people about it initially, then practice getting into discussions online, keeping you cool, answering in a succinct way rather than this a long kind of ramble. And online you get an opportunity to take your time to be careful when selecting your words. Um, I, I spent, a, you know... I've, your speech, let's, yeah. let's hone in on that. So that's had how many million views? 11 million. 11 million, 11 million. probably million. more, because you haven't worked out where it's been shared in that, yeah. but we're talking 10 to 20 million. So that was in 2016. Uh, that was really, really, really compelling. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's, it's one of the most relatable speeches I've ever seen. What was like the Thanks, prep? Man the prep going into that was it just a case of like you know you'd answered a few people's few critics questions over the months after you did your year-long silence and then you just took to the stage or did he kind of meticulously prepare that speech that was, because it he, he executed that real well man it was wild man because that was the first time i ever done that speech and it was mainly a freestyle from the heart so when i finished my vow of silence i wanted to continue spreading the message and my plan was to spend a whole year developing the perfect speech, you know, and then going into universities and schools and things like that, like Yurovsky did, very inspired by what Yurovsky sure. had done. But as soon as I started talking again, everyone that day, people were like, come to a speech here, come to a speech there, and I didn't have a speech, so I just went and told my story, you know, going voiceless and going vegan. And he knew it was being filmed in a proper way. And well, this was before that, man. This, okay, so this, this is, is leading this up is, to this. This is speech. way before. This is leading up to this. This is the year leading up to that. Right, and so none of this stuff was getting filmed. You were just nah, going in, you were just going around. I was around. doing my thing. Yeah, and I was doing it quite a lot. But then, and that was just on my journey. But then this particular speech, I was speaking at a vegan festival. I didn't want to just preach to the choir, so I decided I would do a speech main, mainly aimed at vegans in how to spread this message and, you know, what we can do to to inspire people to become vegan. And I had like just a couple of kind of bullet points in my head, you know, I want to talk about this, I want to talk about that, but nothing, I hadn't rehearsed it at all. And then I got up there and I started going and halfway through I was like, man, this is going well. If we aren't eating animals for health, and we don't need to kill and eat them to survive and be healthy, what are we doing this to them for? Tapping into animals right now, you would not wish on your worst enemy. The worst offenders on this planet, pedophiles, sex offenders, murderers, do not get treated anywhere near as badly as the way we treat the most innocent and vulnerable beings on this planet. So this is not some mundane diet choice. This is the difference between enslavement and freedom, between torture and peace, between death and life. I've had so much success with it, dude, I can't even tell you. So by the end of the speech, when, I, when it ended and I didn't screw it up, I was just like, that yeah, is gonna yeah, be yeah. a thing, man. Yeah, That's yeah. going somewhere, like that speech. And it took a little while before people kind of got onto it. Sure, it took a while. It, yeah, it definitely it took, a while, took a while. Man. But the people that watched it were like, this is the best speech I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. And I was and like, he had hey, a small, get it out there. A few smaller channels re-upload it and then it just, up and up and up and up and then I think not is it not anonymous to the voices? No, nah, it was um best it was, feature over here. Yeah, best video you'll ever hear. Shed it and went then, yeah, went hectic. and it's still going hectic, man. Like it's still going. The dude from Best Video You Ever See, which is a Facebook page of four and a half million people who have subscribed big page. to it, he said that out of all the videos they've ever shared, it's the most powerful video at inspiring people to become vegan that they've ever shared. The most effective. Let's talk about your health journey. I know you, you mentioned it in your speech, but um, a lot of people tune in to this channel for, for health information. Just found out 80% of our audience on YouTube, the views on, on YouTube are from people that aren't subscribed. So potentially a lot of Whoa. people that aren't vegan. Yeah. What the sort of... Um, Subscribe, man. This is like one of the best <laughs> channels going. Thanks, man. It what, is so good. What? Let's talk about, firstly, like your transformation. What were the benefits, the health benefits that you felt when you went, when you went sort of plant-based? 
Oh, Let's man. talk about that journey. Okay, so, well, I came from a background of having leukemia and lymphoma when I was 17 years old. I became a personal trainer for eight years, so I thought I knew a lot about nutrition and health, and I taught people you know, about nutrition and health every single day. So when I learned about, first of all, being vegetarian and the benefits of cutting meat from your diet and then taking that further and realizing how much there's even more benefits of cutting all animal products from your diet, I became extremely excited. You know, I, I learned that you can live a longer life, reducing your chances of all the biggest, or many of the biggest killers, like heart disease and cancers, diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis, and I got so excited that I'd stumbled onto this. It was like a massive secret, it felt like where I could live this longer life, help other people live a longer, healthy life, including my friends and my family. You know, I didn't want them to suffer and die decades before their time, so I became very excited about spreading the message. Personal benefits I noticed, I mean, they sound kind of strange, man, but it was very quick that I noticed I felt happier, just generally happier, and I don't know what I put that down to. Maybe it's from literally not putting the product of violence and torture and killing into my body anymore, and maybe it's from not putting that, that high amount of hormones in my body. Maybe it's just because I knew I was contributing to something good. I don't know, but I felt happier. I felt, you know, I became more lean, my, the body fat from my body. I became um, just, I felt like I... So you make, sleep at night. I was, just, yeah. I was just about to say, I felt, I don't sleep that much, man. Really? I used to struggle if I didn't sleep much. Now, if I don't get a long sleep at night, which is almost every night, I'm still fine the next day. That was never me before, man. And I just feel great, like I feel good in the gym. I haven't, I haven't been sick, not even a sore throat, since I went vegan, which was three and a half years ago. Like nothing, man. What tips do you have for people that um, want to be like healthy, plant-based, you know, they want to feel better, they want to feel optimal. What would you say? Yeah. What would you say they should eat? I would say eat a wide variety of the whole foods. So lots of beans, lots of fruits, vegetables, uh, grains, easy on the nuts and seeds. I would say follow the advice of the, the leading plant-based doctors like Dr. Greger and Dr. Neil Bernard and T. Colin Campbell. There's so many amazing doctors out there putting out book after book or video after video that can help everyone learn exactly what to eat, how to eat for the best chance at living a long, healthy life with delicious, amazing recipes. Really good recipe website would be forksoverknives.com and there's a recipe section there. Very, very healthy, very delicious, tasty food. Nice, man. So um, going forward, how do you think your activism will change? You've recently started like weightlifting. I don't know if that, does that count as activism? I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess. think so. Yeah, why not? I think so because for me, any, activism is any time you're spreading the vegan message or any time you are cutting through those myths that people believe. And a massive myth that people believe is that you can't be healthy and strong sure. as a vegan, even though the world record holding strong man's a vegan, Mr. Universe a couple of years ago was a vegan, etc. So, I think it underpins a lot of the misinformation, doesn't it? Yeah. The, uh, the, yeah, the fact that people think, you know, we need uh, animal products to survive. I thought that for eight years as a personal trainer, well, I thought it for my whole life, but especially the eight years as a personal trainer. A lot of people are very confused about that. It's the opposite, man. If you want to survive for longer and healthier, you stop eating the animal products. So yeah, weightlifting, I mean, I'm doing it mainly because I just need a little bit of an outlet because I'm quite busy all the time. So that for me is, it's not just about spreading messages for me too, so I can feel good, but it is a great way to shatter that myth that you need to eat animal products to be strong and healthy. For me, my own activism, I'm totally booked out with speeches for the next year. I'm spending more time on YouTube now because I've realized, you know, I was I have Facebook and Instagram every single day and I've realized that YouTube is so much more timeless. You try to find my Facebook post from a year ago, it's going to take you ages. Sure. YouTube, YouTube, you just scroll down quick like that. On the page, so I'm, one page, all there. Exactly, man. So I'm focusing much more on YouTube now and, um, and I'm really enjoying that. And I think for me, yeah, like my whole year's booked out with speeches. Next year's booking out with speeches. I'll just continue riding this wave. This is what I'm good at and this is working very well. So I'll continue nice, with this man. for a while. I've got ideas for the future in terms of campaign ideas that are pretty wild, but I'll hold off on them until I, you know, until the, the wave of the vow of science and everything has died down. Until, so you're not going to tell us about future ideas until the wave of the vow of silence has died down. Does that <laughs> indicate this anything? to do with that and you're going to do the same thing? No, what does that no mean? Come way. on, give us a hint, bro. Oh, dude, just I mean like, there's no way I'm doing a vow of silence again, that's for sure, that sucked. <laughs> but, and it, you know, it's done now, so, no, what I'll be doing in the future will just be like, 
and you know other campaigns what I like to do like, you know like last year I got tattooed for 25 hours straight to raise money for charity and we live stream the whole thing as well what I like about this kind of campaign the vow of science the 24 hour tattoo is that it's interesting to anybody you don't need to be a vegan or an animal lover to be interested in somebody taking a year-long vow of silence or to be interested in someone getting tattooed for 25 hours straight so other campaigns that I am trying to think of are ones that don't necessarily have anything to do specifically with animals that anyone can be interested in that's what I'm focusing on and so I've got a couple ideas for that. I can't tell you what they are. Right, like, no, I need to right. just chill on it. Right. They're pretty hectic, and so like I'm not even 100 yeah, percent sure. Yeah, yeah. I have told and, people. And I think you know when me personally, I did about you, but when I've got a really good idea, when it's so good, you don't tell anybody. I actually have told a bunch of people. Oh man, and like it's on, on my YouTube channel, so. But well, funny, why, why can't you tell us here? Nah, because this is a bigger channel, man. <laughs> nah, I don't know. Look, I tell subscribe you why. I tell to, you why. Subscribe to James to find out. I tell you why because when I had the idea. And look, it happened with the vow science as well. When I started telling people, everyone was like, please do not do this. And this is more of like a health issue. So when I did the vow science, everyone said, please don't do this. And I was like, I'm doing this. Like, sorry, everyone, I'm doing this. I knew I had to do it. With this other thing, I am a little bit less confident because it is definitely more of a health risk to myself. It's a very worthwhile thing. It's a very worthwhile cause. Um, You're putting yourself on the line, man. Exactly, bro. And so, you know, like I put myself on the line with the tattoo thing as well. But this is like a little bit next, next level. level. A little next, bit next level. We said it at the same time. Dude, that's the feeling we're getting. People do it all the time, right? People do it all the time. But it's a little bit next level. And so I'm just still like figuring it out, you know, if I definitely want to do it and if it's worth, if it's, if the danger of doing it justifies the outcome. And you know, even saying it now, I'm like, it does. So I probably right. can't do it. <laughs> cool man. Yeah. Well, yeah. when are you gonna? When are you gonna do? When are you gonna? When are you gonna do that? I'm, I'm literally. The I'm literally too busy right now. To right, do it. I was planning dude. to do it this year, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I don't even have a day spare for the rest of the year. Next year is looking like it's gonna fill up as well. So I don't nice. know, man. It's, it's there's no rush. A few more questions, and then we'll let you go. Um, biggest threat to veganism. What biggest threat to veganism. Um, well, I mean, the misinformation is big. You know, like people who think that you can't be healthy. I think that's one of the biggest things because people generally start eating vegan food and a vegan diet for themselves a lot of the time. You know, they want to be healthy, this and that. And then the animal compassion comes later, perhaps due to, you know, for me, there's this really good Buddhist quote, the consumption of animal products extinguishes the seed of great compassion. I don't know if that's true, but for me that felt real. And I think a lot of people, when they stop eating animal products, then they start feeling for animals. Not always, but that seems to happen a lot. So I think the misinformation out there about not being able to be healthy as a vegan is probably one of the biggest sticking points, but obviously there's so much information that counteracts that. I think though as well, sometimes the way that vegan the vegan community is when we attack it's each inviting. other yes infighting attacking other activists bringing each other down instead of supporting each other encouraging each other you don't need to agree with everything everyone does but you can put forward your opinions and your ideas to other people and suggestions in a way that isn't about blaming and shaming everybody and like you know i've seen really good activists burn out due to the amount of criticism and hate they receive from vegans and it's like if you you know, there's not that many vegans out there. There's definitely not that many vegan activists out there putting it out there every single day. So I think we need to be more welcoming. careful. What, yeah, welcoming, but also like careful with how we speak to each other because you know there's, we've woken up to a nightmare that is animal agriculture, and it's hard. Vegans are struggling. Like a lot of vegans are, it's like secondary post-traumatic stress disorder. So I think we just need to be aware that. You know, we need to be kind to each other, we need to model good behaviour, that's what veganism is all about in my opinion. And I think yeah, the infighting is kind of like a big issue. In every community, you know, just veganism is just another one, but I think it's, it's an area where we could really improve on. Um, bigger, other biggest threats, man, you know, personally in my opinion, it's just a matter of time. So I just think, you know, I guess it's not a, it's not a danger to the movement, but what would make things go a whole lot faster is if all vegans became activists in one way or another. You know, don't just leave it up to those few activists who are really getting out there or those other people who are making a few vids and that. Every single vegan can spread the vegan message. You don't have to cover yourself with blood. You can just post some of your photos of food. You can just have random conversations. You can just tell your vegan story. You, you know, you can share other people's work. There's so much we can do and if we can flood social media with this vegan message because it's so real, because it's so true, because it's so right, Getting it out there like that, that's how things are going to change fast. And obviously the faster the better because what's happening right now needs to end as soon as possible.
It's been a pleasure, man. Keep Likewise. up the good work. Thanks, bro. Uh, well. James Aspie's channel linked down below. Thanks for watching.